What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. That's right, your grip is now killing your gains. You see, we're taking back the killing your gains videos to actually make a good killing your gains video. Look, do something for me. Hold your hands out. I'm gonna prove this to you right here. All right, take your hand, now turn one of them and face yourself. Which finger is the longest? For most of you, it should be your middle finger. Jesse, the length of your middle finger has nothing to do no, no, with- No, 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 Jeff, make an L and it's the distance between your thumb and your forefinger. Oh my God, that's, that's frightening. Okay, look, forget that. Hold your hand out. How long? It's the middle finger, right? Now, when you close your hand down, look at which finger is now the longest. For most of us, it should be that ring finger now extending longer down. Now that happens because anatomically, the way our fingers fan out, we're gonna make that longer. But there's an implication for this. Now squeeze your hands as hard as you possibly can. Squeeze those fingers into that base of your hand. Which one is exerting the most force? You could probably see on mine, it's that same ring finger. The reason for that is that you've given yourself more leverage. This is the longest finger being able to create the most leverage and force through your hand. Well, guess what happens when you go grip a bar or a pull-up bar? This finger tries to dominate, and when it does, it creates problems all the way down here. You see, this inflammation right here is the most common for anybody that's ever lifted a weight. If you've ever done any type of heavy pulling movement, you've likely at some point in your life dealt with some type of pain on the medial elbow here. It's called medial epicondylitis or golfer's elbow. It's a pretty harsh pain. It feels like someone's driving a knife right into your elbow. The reason for that is because, break out the markers to show you why, because there's a muscle that connects these two points. Now I talked about this in the past, but it bears repeating here because it's gonna make you really understand this. It's called the flexor, write this down Jesse, flexor digitorum superficialis, or FDS to make it a little bit easier for you. Jesse. That's so, very difficult. So now what it does, it's actually got two heads. One head comes right off of that point and it comes down here to the wrist and then it feeds off into two fingers, the fourth finger and the fifth finger. And it inserts right here onto that middle interphalangeal joint here, okay, in our fingers. And the other one comes over here and it goes into the pinky. So then we've got this other head that kind of comes off, it shares a common tendon here, but what it does is it mostly comes off of the radius and it feeds down and then it comes down here into the wrist and then this goes and it feeds off into the second finger, right, the pointer finger and into the middle finger. Well, because we know how much of a contribution this finger wants to make in terms of any time we make a grip on a bar or a pull-up bar, this is the one that, not ironically, is the one that's got the most tension and stress being placed right there at that insertion right here on the medial elbow. So what we want to do is we want to figure out a way that when we go to grip something, that we can minimize the contribution of this, to minimize the dominance that this wants to do. Because you guys can see there's a pretty thin muscle. This can't handle all kinds of heavy loads, weighted chin-ups, heavy rows, deadlifts. It can't handle that on its own. You need to figure out ways to make that work. So with that being said, guys, let me take you over to our mock pull-up bar to show you how to get this right every time. All right, guys, so here's our makeshift pull-up bar. What we're looking for is two things, right? When we're gonna direct our hands into a bar and then lift our own body weight with or without additional weight, you wanna make sure that you're not putting that bar too far out into those fingers for the reasons I just said, where we're overloading all of them. Okay, you wanna make sure that the bar is in a position within the hand that's gonna allow you to take advantage of the, of the additional strength you get from the structure of the hand. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna minimize the contribution of that fourth finger like we talked about. So how do you do the first thing first? Well, guys, if you have an inflammatory condition, right? Now, here, here's a quick test if you have it, right? What you do is you take your hands and you just cover three fingers. We're gonna test this finger. You cover these three fingers, you push down right on that middle joint. Just like that, and you're trying to keep it from getting pushed down. So I'm, I'm trying to pull it up this direction. You shouldn't feel anything at that spot. Now you cover these three fingers, right? You keep them back, and you try to test this one out. You shouldn't feel anything. It's the middle finger. Now you cover those three fingers, and you try to test this one here. And this is where it's going to light up like a Christmas tree. This is where that knife is going to be stuck right into that medial elbow if you're having this pain. And of course, you could test the last one by holding that one back and then pulling up on this, you probably shouldn't feel much there either. It's just reinforcing how bad it is. If it's really bad, then a few exercise substitutions you should make is to take anything that you're doing underhand and just flip it overhand for now to allow yourself to get out of that acute phase. So if you have been doing 
underhand lat pull downs, you go to overhand lat pull downs. If you have been doing chin ups or weighted chin ups, you go to overhand pull ups. Try to widen your grip a little bit too, which will help. If you have been doing mixed grip deadlifts, you try to go back to a double overhand. I'll get to that in a second. If you're doing rows, any kind of underhand rowing should be substituted with overhand rowing for the time being. But back to the pull up bar, what you do is a couple things. You want to target this joint right here. Okay, this is the joint that you want to be aware of because this is going to dictate, Jesse, you can come around the back, I'll show you what we're talking about, where this bar is being placed in your hand because you want to make sure that bar is being placed deep into your hand. So if I go and I grab the bar for a pull up, and I'm going to get down here as if I'm under the bar, what I want to see is I don't want to see that knuckle if I'm doing the pull up. All I want to do is be able to see these. And if you get from my perspective here, all you should be able to do is see these, right? So at that point, if I start to fail and I start to lose my grip and I start to come down like this, all of a sudden, guess what pops up in the view? Those other knuckles that we talked about. You don't want that because as soon as that does, look at all that stress is placing right at the end of those tendons. They're hanging on for dear life and again, this is going to do most of that pulling for the reasons we already talked about with the most leverage that's going to come right down here and overload that medial elbow, okay? Not good, especially if you have additional weight that you're doing this exercise with. So you only want to see these knuckles. Now, if I switch to a chin up, it's the same knuckle in question here, but in this case, I want to see it. I want to see the tops of them because the only way I could see them is if I get the bar deep enough into my hand to be able to see them. If I can't see them and they go out of view and all I can see are these on the chin up, now again, I'm overloading. You can see that overloading these distal tendons that are going to place all that stress down here at the elbow. So how do we do the next thing here? The next thing would be to decrease the influence of this fourth finger from doing so much work. Well, I've shown this to you guys in the past. It works like magic, okay? You take a band if you have one. You wrap it around and you tie it around the bar, right? This sets up two little pieces of the band like this. When you go to do your pull-ups, you put your fourth and fifth finger on top of the band like that. You take the other three fingers, you put them on the bar. What this has done is this has shifted the focus to these three fingers to do the majority of the work to grip that bar and pull you up. Because we've increased the distance here and changed the length tension relationship of these muscles, we've actually decreased their contribution a little bit. We kind of deadened them a little bit in terms of how much they want to dominate that. And if you try it yourself, you'll feel this right away. If you have elbow pain and you make this switch and you're now pulling through here, you'll feel most of the work is now being done here and that elbow pain that you were experiencing five seconds ago, you won't feel it anymore. Right? So you do them with two bands hanging off of the bar. Okay, you could do the same thing when we do the chin and you could grip them this way again and pull from there and that will even decrease the pain that you feel on a chin up. But again, if you're really acute, I would shift away from the chin up at the time being. So that being said, guys, now I want to address finally the barbell and show you a couple of the things you want to do there. All right, so now with the barbell work, you know, this is the source of a lot of your gains in your training. But again, if this is flared up, your grip is directly killing your gains because you can't do as heavy a barbell work as you'd like to do because this is causing a, a big block to what it is you're trying to accomplish. So again, we have a two part strategy. Whenever you grip this barbell, your goal should be to try to grip it as deeply into your palm as you possibly can. Now you might be thinking that, hey look, Jeff, you told me in the past to like bend my, my, my wrist back when I do a curl. It doesn't change the fact that you want to have the barbell deep because if we take it like this, right, and we take the barbell, I'll use my finger as the barbell, and I place it deep in the palm and I grip around it. Even if I were to bend my wrist back, and the purpose of that, by the way, is to sort of deaden the forearm from contributing too much and dominating a bicep curl. Well, you can still see that, that if, if the barbell is sitting deep enough in the palm here, that it's still resting directly over my forearm, which provides the support at the top. It's not being carried all the way out here, which is not only going to overload those tendons, but it's also going to place an inordinate amount of uh, strain and stress on that muscle too, which can cause some traction stress on that same point. Further problems, right? So you want to get that barbell deep in your hand. But there's another thing you can do here. I mentioned I would get to it. You can switch momentarily to a hook grip. Now what the hook grip does, ironically, is it actually takes the exact problem that you're having in, in loading these two fingers too much and it literally shifts all the load to these three fingers. So if you come around, I'll show you what we're talking about. The hook grip is not really a comfortable thing. It's something that takes getting used to. But again, biomechanically, it's the exact solution to the problem you're having right now. And even if you get used to it, you might wind up sticking with it because it will take away some of the risks that might come from having a mixed grip on a deadlift as the weight gets heavier. So if we take our hand here, what you want to do is you want to go over the top, but you want to dig it as far into this crevice as you possibly can. So you come all the way down. 
right? We're not just getting deep into the palm like we were talking about before, but now we're getting really deep into here so that I can get that thumb across, right? And the goal here is that if I get that deep enough, these two fingers now are going to position themselves one over the nail and one behind the knuckle, like that, okay? And then we dig in. Now what's happened here, just by getting into this position, is these two fingers have dramatically been decreased in terms of their contribution to this grip. Everything is now being squeezed through here. And if you feel pain when you do this, it's likely because you're pressing on top of the knuckle. You don't want to be pressing directly down on top of the knuckle. You can do that right now and, it, and you'll likely feel that it kills. You want to be around that knuckle. Okay, one in front, one behind. You can squeeze this as hard as you possibly can. It's not going to cause any discomfort right now. So when we get in that position, again, now when I go and I grip and I pull, whether I'm doing a row, whether I'm doing a deadlift, whatever I'm doing, it's shifting the focus away from the, 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 that ring finger here that wants to dominate this movement and is giving you a reprieve, maybe temporarily, maybe forever, from the overloaded stress that's causing all this elbow pain. And when you get rid of that elbow pain, guys, then you're getting rid of that long-term problem that is going to inhibit your ability to make gains in the gym. Your heavier lifts are going to depend upon you having the right grip. If you get this sorted out here, guys, hopefully now with a few modifications, these are the problematic exercises. Now you have a way to get around them. Guys, I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. If you're looking for a program where the small details matter because it's always going to matter when it comes to training for longevity. All of our programs are built around training for a long time, for a lifetime. You can find them over at athletics.com. If you haven't already done so, guys, make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.